all valves can be damaging in two sides, insufficiency and stenosis. Insufficiency, what the mean? Not good closing uh, area or additional space between the abnormal or some damaging of the cusps. Stenosis, too good, too bad closing at problem with the opening. So insufficiency, not good closing. Stenosis, in fact, problem with the opening of the cusps of the valve. Next group of um, syndromes, combined heart defects. What it is? Combined heart defects means combination of mitral valve insufficiency and, for example, in stage of the compensation, development aortic insufficiency. Combination of congen such congenital pathology like a tricuspid stenosis with stenosis or mitral stenosis or aortic stenosis. So combined damaging of the valve. Next group, syndrome of acute and chronic coronary insufficiency. In case, like example, it's a chronic coronary insufficiency, stable angina pectoris and coronary heart disease. In case of acute coronary insufficiency, acute damaging, um, uh, infection with ST elevation and non-ST elevation. Next, hypertension syndrome or syndrome of arterial hypertension. Fluid syndrome in the pericardial region, constrictive pericardial syndrome, and syndrome of pulmonary hypertension and development of formation pulmonary heart, like the last one. Also, the pulmonary hypertension, it's a, a clinical syndrome of damaging of the cardiovascular system. So uh, we'll start from um, circulatory failure syndrome. Chronic circulatory failure and in fact it's heart failure. And um, what we have to know, we have to know what the two main classification. First of all, it's classification of heart failure by New York Heart Association. And we can differentiate it four classes of um, heart failure. First class, describing this class. There is a heart disease in patient, but it does not limit physical activity, does not limit level of physical activity, such person. And normal exercises uh, does not cause a severe fatigue, palpitation, or shortness of breath, like a main sign of heart failure. So we knew already about present some uh, heart uh, diseases, some cardiovascular diseases, but these diseases can be a cause of development heart failure, but in real time, exactly at this moment, this disease does not limit the level of physical activity and does not uh, uh, lead uh, to developing clinical signs like shortness of breath, like developing of dyspnea in patient of heart failure, with heart failure. Second class by the New York Heart Association. Heart disease, nature of the heart disease, leads to a slight restriction of physical activity, only slight level of limit of physical activity. At rest, there are no symptoms at all, but plain physical activity causes to development fatigue, palpitation, and shortness of breath. Third class of uh, heart failure. Heart disease leads to a significant limitation of physical activity. At rest, there are no symptoms also, but less common activity, very um, less level, not high level of the physical activity can lead to developing clinical signs of heart failure, like a general fatigue, like a development of uh, palpitation, and like a development of shortness of breath. The last class or fourth class by New York Heart Association um, cardiovascular disease in patient can lead to several restriction or several limitation the level of physical activity. Heart symptoms and damaging of the heart symptoms insufficiency and angina appears exactly during the rest of patient or exactly during the calm condition. And with any activity, the, seems, uh, the uh, stim symptoms, symptoms start to intensify. So 
fourth class of heart failure, chronic heart failure or chronic circulatory failure uh, by classification of New York Heart Association. Also, there is another one uh, type of classification of a chronic circulatory failure, uh, classification by Strazeshka and Vasilenko or Russian classification. It's not the same. So in um, the diagnosis and the, both this classification using everywhere, so uh, during um, during calculated the diagnosis of the patient, we have to put it from the both for uh, classification. So also we can um, differentiate it three stages, but second stage we can divide it into two substage on the, or by two points. Stage one or initial uh, stage of development and circulatory failure or hidden stage. About describing shortness of brief, tachycardia, mild cyanosis during exercising, hemodynamics and organ function at rest and not impaired, and normal working capacity is slightly reduced. What does it mean? Normal working capacity is slightly reduced. It means that uh, time to time, time to time, uh, our patient with presence already heart disease start to feed in some general fatigue in normal level of physical activity, normal, normal level of movements. Second stage or several stage of heart failure, blood stasis in the small and or large cycle of blood circulation with impaired function of organs during the rest. Disability reduced, and in the stage um, we can differentiate it two substages. Um, second A stage characterized by minor hemodynamic abnormalities. It means that stagnation in well in the one cycle of circulation, or in the small cycle of circulation, or in the uh, life cycle of circulation. So the same, or it will be left side uh, heart failure, or it will be right side heart failure. Uh, second B stage manifested by deep hemodynamics disturbance or disbalance and total damage into the circulatory system. And in fact, it's a point in the difference between stage A and stage B. So stage B, it's congestion in the both cycles of circulation. Second A, only stagnation in the one cycle of circulation. Uh, stage um, second B, stagnation in the both cycle of circulation. And the last one of third stage of the heart failure, it's a final style, uh, final stage, stage of decompensation and dystrophic with constant hemodynamic disorders and deep reducible metabolic disorders in the structure of the myocardium. So two classification of the chronic circulatory failure, classification by the New York Heart Association and classification uh, by the Strazeshka uh, and the Selenko. Which cause uh, can lead to development of uh, the chronic heart failure? Myocardial other stain or myocardial disorders caused by walking other load, by the pressure or by the volume. And remind about two types of the load to the heart, yes, preload and afterload. So, overstaining on the myocard by the working other load pressure volume, violation of the blood supply to the myocardium, myocardial damage by the different nature, metabolic, metabolic disorders, nutritional uh, dis, uh, deficiency or nutritional disorders, electrolyte substance uh, deficiency or um, disorders in the, uh, in the amount of the electro electrolytes, for example, in case of chronic kidney failure, pathological hormonal and alcohol intoxication, all types of intoxication and in fact, all metabolic or nutritional disorders, it's a, a type of intoxication or collection, some additional level of um, um, such of electrolytes. The presence of fluid <clears throat> in the pericardial cavity, pericardial fusion and development of cardiac tamponade can be a reason of development heart failure. More often it will be acute heart failure, but this type of acute heart failure can be reason of developing constantly of chronic heart failure also. Different types of arrhythmias and head blockage. 
changes in the departments of the heart which provide in an environment in uh, contractile function, contractility function, consist in the expansion of the cavities of the heart uh, and the damaging of the cavities of the heart on the side of dilatation and myocardial hypertrophy. In fact, all changes in the uh, structure of the departments of the heart, like a result, like a compensation mechanism, lead to development, first of all, to hypertrophy after the compensation, lead to development dilatation of any chambers and depends from um, the nature of the firstly pathological condition. Hypertrophy of the left ventricle is clinically manifested by an increased, diffuse and displaced apical impulse to the left and down, as well as displacement of the left percussion border of the heart to the left. During physical examination, how we take a month about development hypertrophy of the left ventricle usually. We can assess it during palpation, during assess other presence in, uh, of the apical impulse and the sign of development already hypertrophy will be shifting apical impulse to the left side significantly from the normal localization. And also during percussion, we can determine shifting uh, the left border of the relative dunus of the heart also to the left. Right ventricular hypertrophy is characterized by the appearance of heart beating the shift uh, on the right border of the heart to the right. And hypertrophy and dilatation of the right ventricular is the main cause of our presence cardiac impulse, which in fact combined um, and formed by the chamber of the right ventricular. Other time, hypertrophy and tenogenic dilatation is to perform a compensatory function. Myogenic dilatation of the heart is formed due to weakness of the heart muscle and is characterized by a significant expansion of the cavities of the heart and increase in the area of its absolutely absolute and relative doom. A weakening of the apical impulse and smoothing of the contours of the heart. What it is smoothing of the contour of the heart? During percussion, we can determine the contour of the heart. So smoothing of the contour, it means the smoothing the uh, place of the waist of the heart. So hypertrophy of the left and the hypertrophy of the right ventricular, like a sign of a chronic heart failure, but from uh, different sides. Uh, we, 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 we did it already into my mind. I showed you uh, this type of picture, but look uh, for one, not look to that cardiomyopathy. Yes, it's hypertrophic type of myocard for us. Firstly, hypertrophy and dilatated type of myocard. Look to hypertrophy. And um, this picture is hypertrophy at left ventricular, increasing in the size, um, in the wider of uh, the wall of the ventricle. Yes, obstructive hypertrophy, which leading to reducing the volume, uh, the volume of the chamber of the left ventricular. Dilatation, look, very thin, a lower of the muscle in two in both ventricles, but more in the structure of the left ventricular, leading to enlargement in the volume. If we try to assess the contractility function of the uh, hypertrophic uh, type of myocard and dilatated type of myocard, surely contraction faction uh, will, uh, will destroy, destroy, yes? But in case of dilatation, it's, practi it's practically impossible to uh, try to do con con contraction during the systole of the heart on the normal and constantly level. But in case of hypertrophy, before the development of my dilatation, uh, the contraction faction of the first stages uh, will increase in the same time, same, uh, some one. About clinical manifestation of circulatory failure syndrome, it's possible manifested from tachycardia, like a compensatory way, it's possible uh, manifested from the dyspnea, from cardiac asthma. It also can be manifested from pulmonary edema, congestive enlargement of the liver, edema, and cyanosis.
It depends from um, the level of damaging. It depends from uh, the localization, first damaging, left side heart failure or right side heart failure. Acute left ventricle failure. Region of development, acute left ventricle failure. Later stages of the disease, which are accompanied by a load on left ventricle. For example, several arterial hypertension, which increasing after load for the left ventricular chamber, hypertensive crisis, like uh, acute stage of uh, arterial hypertension, like a stage of decompensation, aortic and mitral heart defects, which uh, uh, which can be a clinical sign of arterial hypertension also, may get the infection, disorders heart rate, in different types of arrhythmias, cardiosclerosis, and different type of cardiopathy. Against the background, second reason, against the background of chronic left ventricular failure, it's provoked by physical and emotional stress, dilatation, coronary circulation, and increased blood pressure, tachycardia, and exposure to infection factors. Acute left ventricular failure often develops at night and manifested by cardiac asthma or pulmonary edema. Because remind about mechanism of development left side heart failure. It does not uh, matter. Is it will be chronic, chronic, but it more duration, uh, more longer duration in the um, formation um, such clinical signs. But in case of acute left ventricular failure, the same mechanism of stagnation by the small cycle of circulation, the same mechanism of stagnation in the pulmonary circulation, but very quickly. So acute right ventricular heart failure, the main and the first reason of development acute right ventricular failure is embolism of the large branch of the pulmonary artery or pulmonary embolism. It's the first, it's the most um, damaging, it's the most dangerous reason of development acute, uh, acute uh, right side heart failure. During examination in patients with acute right uh, side heart failure, uh, we can determine swelling of the cervical dance about stagnation in the small cycle of circulation, also painful enlargement of the liver and severed cyanosis and tachycardia, like a clinical examination, like a general examination. Look at this picture. This picture shows us difference between acute right heart, uh, right heart failure and acute left heart um, failure. First of all, look to the other side with the right uh, acute right uh, heart failure. The most important and the most significant sign there, it will be lower leg edema and weight gain. Look, loss of appetite and weight gain. Is it possible that we can to determine it very quickly? Yes, because we discussed acute right side heart failure. Yes, it will be sign, but not exactly right now. Maybe due to time, maybe due to 12 hours, maybe due to 24 hours. Yes, we uh, need to uh, monitoring the condition of the patient to find such clinical signs like a loss of appetite and uh, with gain. But we can determine exactly after um, after 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 collapsing yes in, in fact after present such pathological such um, dangerous condition we can identify low and very quickly development of the lower leg edema till the level of the abdominal cavity, maybe till the level of the NSR, till the level of the total edema, and for finding loss of appetite and weight gain. Also, surely we have to measure the mass of the patient, but it's not a first and the most important, important clinical size of acute right uh, side heart failure. What about acute left heart failure? First of all, shortness of breath during exercising or shortness of breath during any physical activity, upright respiration position, shortness of breath and coughing at night, and remind about position of heart apnea. Also, we can determine palpitations of the heart in such type of patient and development general fatigue and tiredness.
About prevalence syndrome in case of uh, acute heart failure during uh, such um, syndromes during clinical examination, which we can find in patients with heart failure. Why are the person? Yes, more significant. Look, third heart sound. And uh, we, at this week, we discussed with you auscultation picture of the heart. And the main reason of development pathological or third heart sound, it will be, um, it will be a heart failure, surely. Because third heart sound de depends from the level of the final diastolic pressure in the chamber of the left ventricle. So third heart sound prevalence practically to the 50% of the patient, yes? Uh, next one, pulmonary crepitation, which we can determine during auscultation, but of the lungs, yes, the, the auscultation of the heart, auscultation of the lungs, also practically in all, um, in, till 70 in person of the patient. Ugular, the nozzle's destination, or ugular positive pulse, hemodynamics disturbance, it means that the level of the mm, general blood pressure and systolic blood pressure should be less than 90 millimeter of argentum stage and diastolic blood pressure should be less than 60 uh, millimeters. And development peripheral edema, also significant during examination in patient with acute heart failure. So in fact, we can determine with you all clinical signs um, of heart failure from the left side, so or stagnation in the small cycle and stagnation in the large cycle of circulation. Look, like a pulmonary embolism, we discussed with you that pulmonary embolism it's a first and the most important reason of developing acute right side ventricular heart failure. Yes, about pathogenesis of the pulmonary embolism. Uh, pulmonary embolism. Just a minute. Yes, first of all, uh, look to the picture. Look there. The host factor for development um, of the um, pulmonary embolism, it's developing different types of thrombosis or embolism in the system, um, in the, the nose system of the lower extremities. Yes, that's why we have to assess the presence of damage in the nose system of the lower extremities. And look there, it's gross, yes, or thrombus toward heart as blood flow will blocked there after previous thrombosis in the system of deep when circulation. So previous thrombosis, what it is? Aggregation thrombocytes after slow down uh, the speed of the blood flow uh, by the reason of damaging of the viral apparatus of the dance and by many in other reasons, yes? But like a result, formation of the thrombosis in the system of dance of the lower extremities. After that, with uh, the um, blood flow, this thrombosis can travel and can push it up through the system of the cover, yes, through the system of, uh, of the main uh, dance to the chamber of the right atrium, first of all. Yes, after that, during patient feelings and the fees of the so called various place uh, um, for putting down uh, the, the nozzle type of blood. It's the right atrium, superior than the cover in the upper part, and inferior than the cover from the lower extremities, from the lower part of the uh, body, some downy. Yes, so this thrombosis traveled and with the blood flow to the left atrium. After opening the tricuspid valve, this throne, this um, throne, putting down in this system or in the chamber of the right ventricle. After closing the uh, tricuspid valve and after opening a valve of the pulmonary artery, this thrombosis pushing to the system of pulmonary circulation. Yes, with uh, the venous blood for oxygenation of this blood. And look after that in the structure of the lungs.
Look, this trump, it's already present in the main trunk of the pulmonary artery, which after that differentiated to both sides. Yes, look. And this trump blocked the uh, pulmonary circulation, which leading to excluded uh, such areas uh, of the alveolar, uh, alveolar vascular membrane from uh, oxygenation process. Yes, look, this small uh, bronchus, uh, this small uh, thrombus blocked different type, different level of the vessels and excluded all these areas from process of oxygenation. Cause no circulation of the blood, no normally process, not normally, exactly no process of oxygenation of the blood uh, on the level of the alveolar vascular membrane which leads to development, first of all, shortness of brief, like a compensatory mechanism and try to constantly saturation and try to constant on the normal way, uh, saturation of the blood. So, low extremity thrombosis traveled through the system of the... Um, through the system of the main dance, through the system of the dana cava, putting down in the chamber of the right atrium, after that right ventricular, and after that due to systole pushing in the system of pulmonary circulation through the pulmonary artery and blockage at all circulation and in fact oxygenation in the lungs. About chronic uh, failure, chronic left ventricular failure, the reason for disease is occurring with a predominant load on the left ventricle and is associated with the nosos congestion in the lungs, but by chronic way. Complaints of the patient, gradual increase in shortness of breath, time to time the level of shortness of breath will be increased. Tendency to take care of the dry cough at night like a pulmonary, um, like a cardiac asthma. Shortness of brief appears first during physical extension and then at rest, and it's amplified in a prone position. So then the patient try to take horizontal position. We can determine amplification or develop in shortness of brief, um, um, shortness of brief or a uh, heart pain. During inspection, we can identify position of artopnea of patient. During palpation and patient with chronic left ventricular failure, uh, the apical impulse moves to the left and down due to dilatation and hypertrophy of left ventricular, and alternating pulse is possible. During percussion, we can determine dullness of the sound uh, in the lower parts of the lungs, which will be a sign of stagnation uh, in the a small cycle of circulation. During auscultation, increased vesicular or hard breathing, sometimes inaudible, most finally bubbling rails on um, wet uh, wheezing or wet rails on the both sides, and also we will determine it on the uh, from the loud part about, about cause it will be in the nature, it will be stagnation. With auscultation of the heart, we can determine a hollow rhythm. Can be, uh, we can determine a hollow rhythm. Dilatation of the left ventricle is often accompanied by a sign of relative mitral insufficiency, and it's a, it will be a reason of developing systolic type of murmur and weakening of the first tone uh, in the uh, apex of the heart. So during auscultation of the heart in patient with chronic uh, left heart failure, first of all, it will be significant for us that ignition of our first cardiac tone due to development relative mitral insufficiency. And also it's possible to determine the murmur of the mitral valve insufficiency. It will be systolic type of murmur and then the apex of the heart and the first point of auscultation. Chronic right ventricular failure. The reason of development ruins the left ventricular due to deep pulmonary circulation disorders and increased pressure in the system of pulmonary artery and other load of the right heart. Isolated right ventricular failure occurs against the background of a chronic lung disease, pulmonary heart, heart defects leading to other load of the right ventricle and constrictive and exudative pericarditis. 
without clinical manifestation of chronic right ventricular failure, general weakness, heaviness in the right hypochondrium due to enlargement of the liver, persistent tachycardia, pastility or swelling of the legs, swelling of the cervical vents and enlarge the liver, nocturia, uh, oliguria and different damaging of the diuresis from the side of the patient and moderate proteinuria associated with the nosus, the nosus congestion of the kidney and development not good blood supply of the other kidney. Uh, by physical examination, we can determine signs of right ventricular hypertrophy, cardiac impulse, shift of the border of the relative dumus of the heart to the right, and we can determine epigastrical pulsation like a sign of dilatation of the right ventricle. With corresponding and uh, with the similar uh, simultaneous changes on the ECG, uh, which uh, will be uh, give us uh, dates about uh, hypertrophy of the right side of the heart, hypertrophy of the right ventricle move. So, continue about vascular insufficiency. We discussed with you chronic and acute heart failure, like a clinical syndromes, like a clinical signs, like a pathogenesis of development. We discussed with you the main reasons of development, chronic and acute um, left and right side heart failure, and continue with vascular insufficiency syndrome. Uh, what about uh, reasons um, of vascular insufficiency syndrome? Violation of the nervous uh, regulation of vascular tone. Maybe it will be terma. Irritation of the cirrhosis membrane in the, in, uh, the case of me, uh, meningitis. Myocardial infection. Pulmonary thromboembolism also can be a reason of developing vascular insufficiency syndrome. Violation of the neurohomoral and endocrine regulation, vascular tone, allergic reaction and developing allergic shock, uh, insufficiency adrenal gland, acidosis and various type of into intoxication, which lead to uh, development shock reaction. Reducing the volume of circulation of the blood, indominable vomiting and the massive blood loss like a make reason of development uh, uh, hemodynamic shock. Also, we can differentiate it acute and chronic forms of vascular insufficiency. Acute vascular insufficiency occurs due to a dilation peripheral circulation with a sharp decrease in the level of the blood pressure and an absent blood supply of internal organs. Clinical forms of acute vascular insufficiency include, including such uh, conditions like a fainting, like collapse, and the critical way like a shock. So, acute vascular insufficiency in the practically you know, in all cases contact with very sharp, very acute decreasing in the level of the blood pressure, which leading to decreasing the level of the blood supply of internal organ in of internal organs including the brain so development the sharp and acute um de development the acute uh, acute uh, broken the normally blood supply of the brain leading to development such pathological condition like a, a fainting collapse and shock is in fact fainting collapse and shock it's uh, in the basis, it, um, it's, it's, uh, will have uh, uh, the same mechanism of development, but the different duration. Yes, fainting, it's a small duration. Collapse, more longer duration, and shock, it's a terminal duration. Also depends from the nature of the shock. Fainting is a sudden short-term loss of consciousness, small time of duration from the some seconds till three minutes by the last classification due to acute transient disturbance of the blood supply and of the brain. The reason of development fainting with then uh, in patient with during then a puncture during in case of malnutrition of the patient during uh, during overwork or overheating in case of severe excitement fright sharp pains when changing the position of the body from the horizontal to vertical, autostatic fainting or autostatic hypotension, in the weakness, 
uh, emaciated patients who are on bed for a long time. For example, after recovery and after such uh, inflammation, such a uh, big inflammation process, and after staying in the uh, bed during the long time, in the first time during taking horizontal position, it's possible that the patient uh, can feel in some confused uh, consciousness. Next reason, with a significant reduction in heart rate, less than 40 contraction, less than uh, 40 uh, beat per minute including patient with atrioventricular blockage. During inspection, we can determine bradycardia, low level of the blood pressure, and slight filamentous pulse. During fainting, sever pillar of the skin during reducing blood supply, in like additional organ, like a skin, hyperhidrosis, um, yes, and um, hyper and uh, you can check by uh, the hand uh, the condition of the skin of the patient. Cold extremities also after reducing blood supply. Saging uh, of the saphenosus dance, narrowing of the papils, slowing of breathing, and relaxation of the muscle are observed. In fact, relaxation of the muscle will, uh, will be a main reason of um, uh, development, um, development uh, losing position of the patient. Next stage, it's a collapse. Collapse is a more severe form of acute vascular insufficiency, which associated with acute paresis of small vessels especially vessels of the abdominal cavity and at the same time the amount of circulation blood decreases and its flow to the heart and the minute volume of the heart arterial and venosus pressure drop the reason massive blood loss or massive blood bleeding different type of trauma with massive blood bleeding Myocardial infection, in fact, myocardial infection, mm, it's not a reason of developing bleeding, yes, but myocardial infection can be a reason of developing hemodynamic shock and poisoning or intoxication. During inspection, uh, what we can find, the skin of the patient is grayish pale, covered cold, sticky sweat, or hyperhydration, limbs will be cool, bluish, features are pointed, eyes are sunken, sharp weakness, chills, thirst, peripheral dance collapse, frequent, uh, soft feeling from pulse, tachypnea, and uh, decreasing the level of the blood pressure. In fact, the same signs of the fainting, but more deep disturbance. Look, yes, not good blood supply of the brain and reducing blood flow to the brain causes a loss of consciousness about reducing blood supply of all nervous, um, nervous cells. Next level of vascular insufficiency, it's a shock. Uh, is an extremely severe form of acute vascular insufficiency, which develops under the influence of super strong irritation. There are several uh, phases in the development of the shock. The first phase is, characteri is characterized by short term excitation, muscle tension, a rise in temperature, and increase in blood pressure, tachycardia, tachypnea, sweating, and motor anxiety are noted. It's a stage of compensation due to activation, renal glycerin lesterone system, and activation of the adrenaline system, which lead to um, increasing level of the blood pressure, increasing level of the heart rate, and uh, uh, organism try to um, try to try to constant uh, the level of the blood supply. Next, top it is of the chalk. There is extreme weakness, patient retardation, development marbling of the skin or pallor of the skin, diffuse great tenosis, cold, sticky sweat, frequent small soft pulse, a significant decrease in the level of the blood pressure low that level of the 1960 oligo and anuria. 
or absolutely diuresis at all. The main types of a shock. First of all, it's hypovolemic type of shock, which is associated with massive blood bleeding, with significant loss of fluid. Not exactly not. Um, uh, a reason of the hemodynamic shock can be not only massive blood bleeding, yes, but um, also can be loss of fluid during unemotional vomiting, during diarrhea, and also with significant loss of proteins. All these reasons lead to reducing um, circulated blood flow. Next type of shock, infection toxic shock. Development with several pneumonia in different stages of the sepsis. Uh, and the main mechanism there is relaxation of peripheral vessels. Next, anaphylactic shock or allergic shock as a manifestation of an allergic reaction to the any types of drugs and insect bite, food, and so on. Fourth type of shock, it's neurogenic type of shock. Next type, it's obstructive shock with thromboembolies of the pulmonary artery and development head tamponade. And uh, next type, endocrine shock in acute adrenal insufficiency. And the last one, it's cardiogenic shock in patient with uh, acute damaging of the myocardium. So, uh, chronic vascular insufficiency is a pathological condition whose main manifestation is a persistent decrease in the nozzles and blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure drops below um, 10 millimeters and diastolic below uh, 16 millimeters. About reason of development chronic uh, vascular insufficiency. With direct damage to the smooth muscles of the blood vessels, in case of damaging uh, of the wall of aorta uh, by the inflammation and development arteritis, in case of damaging of uh, the wall of the vessels by the atherosclerotic plaque, by the phlebitis, by the derecos, um, uh, due to development derecos and stagnation. In violation of the regurgitation of the vascular tone, nervous, humoral, and hormonal regulation in patient with systemic hypotension of peripheral vents. Complaints of the patient, general weakness, fatigue, headaches, shortness of breath with a moderate physical extension, cooling and tightening of the fingers and toys and sweating. During inspection, we can find pillar of the skin, we can find mild level of the cyanosis, we can find pillar or marbling of the skin of the palms, swelling in the morning due to a decrease in the tone of the bands and the nozzles condition, which disappears with motherment, and the limbs are cold to the touch. If you try to touch, like echo cyanosis, you will determine the cold the temperature of the extremities. Uh, small pops and level pulse. So, next important moment in our lecture, it's um, acute and chronic failure. Uh, there are acute and chronic uh, coronary failure or coronary insufficiency. And in fact, it's a moment about coronary heart disease. There are acute and chronic coronary insufficiency. Acute coronary insufficiency occurs suddenly or within a few minutes. The reason of development acute coronary insufficiency. Violation of the functional state of the coronary arteries due to spasm, due to dystonia, due to atherosclerotic plaque, and all these violations leading to development, some occluded by many reasons of the coronary arteries. Mm -hmm. Next, coronary artery thrombosis mm -hmm. and acute increased myocardial oxygen demands. Chronic coronary insufficiency develops gradually, time to time, and has a progressive character. The reason of development chronic coronary insuff insufficiency. Prolonged, recurrent, and progressive lesion coronary arteries, which lead to the persistent norovent or occlusion, time to time, damaging and leading to increasing level of occlusion uh, any type of coronary arteries. So, common cause of coronary insufficiency, coronary atherosclerosis, I put to the first, please. 
rheumatism by the damaging uh, of the wall of the coronary artery. Nodular periarthritis also can be a cause. It is like a systemic disease. Cardiomyopathies, hemodynamic changes of non-coronary genesis with stenosis in the aortic valve and aortic valve insufficiency. Complaints the patient and the main complaints the patient with acute and chronic coronary insufficiency is a pain in the heart region. The nature of the pain is compressive or oppressive. Localization of the pain and remind it's sternum or in the atrial region along the left end of the sternum in the projection of the heart under the sternum. Irradiation of the pain to the left part of the heart, to the left shoulder, to the left arm, left half of the neck and head, loud jaw, intrascapular space, and sometimes in the upper abdominal part in the epigastric region. Possible atypical radiation of the pain on the right shoulder blade, arm and legs. And the relationship between the appearance of the pain attic uh, and physical activity and the main provoke factors it will be increasing psycho-emotional stress or increasing level of physical activity. Duration of the pain no more than 10 minutes from the moment of uh, termination and increasing level of the load. During inspection in patients with coronary heart disease, what we can find? The patient is motionless, the skin is pale, depends on the acute or chronic. Sometimes droplets in the cold sweat appear on the face. The expression of the face is frozen, alarmed, uh, eyes are wide open. Uh, and the, in other interesting clinical signs of acute coronary insufficiency, it's a fear of the death. Some patient uh, with um, acute damage of the myocardium will tell you about such um, compliance like a fear of death. At the time of an attack of chest pain, tachycardia and extrasystole are often found. During auscultation, we can determine muffed heart sounds on ECG during the pain attack, exactly uh, ECG during the uh, heart attack, we can determine regression and disturbance of ST segment more than two millimeters. Yes, depression or, or um, elevation of ST segment, but more than two millimeters, it will be a sign of development um, acute problems. Less than two millimeters, it's a, a sign of a chronic coronary insulin insufficiency. Acute coronary insufficiency develops suddenly or within a few minutes and can last up um, to uh, one half, one, two hours. Instability of coronary blood flow occurs as a result of the dynamic or reversible disturbance of the coronary circulation. It lasts for five and 10 minutes, after which the disturbance metabolic process in the myocardium are completely restored. It will be a sign of stable angina pectoris or coronary, um, or chronic coronary insufficiency. In several acute coronary insufficiency, which last for uh, one and one half, two hours, zones of dystrophy and focal of necrosis forming an ischemic myocardium and infected damage in myocardium, the zones of hyperkinesis and actinesis, and a severe form of coronary heart disease occurs myocardial infection with ST or non ST or ST elevation. The main clinical signs of the severity of acute coronary insufficiency is the intensifying the pain attack in duration more than 50 minutes. It's the main clinical signs intensify due to um, stop physical um, activity due to take nitroglycerin. It's not blockage, uh, the intensity of the pain attack and duration of such type of pain attack more than 15 minutes. Chronic coronary insufficiency is a uh, consequence chronic, often due to atherosclerosis lesion of the coronary uh, arteries and is formed over many months and years. Clinically, chronic coronary insufficiency is expressed by repeated angina attacks of varying severity.
Look, 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 switch off your microphones, please. So, clinically chronic coronary insufficiency expressed by repeated tension attacks of varying severity in a different uh, period of the time, shortness of brief, cardiac arrhythmias, and chronic heart failure, which occur initially during physical and emotional stress and then at the rest, depends from the uh, recommendation. During auscultation, we can uh, identify in uh, muffed heart tones, and uh, in the CG, we can determine persistent uh, ST segment depression with uh, biphases and smoothed or coronary T wave after uh, depression of ST. About classification of coronary heart disease. Uh, also, um, first point, it's sudden cardiac death by the nature of the coronary heart disease. Next point, engine pectoris, which we can differentiate it by stable engine pectoris and indicating by the functional crisis from the one to the fourth. Unstable engine pectoris, which including the first rising engine pectoris, progressive engine pectoris, early post infection of post operative engine pectoris, and spontaneous or disospastic ovarian or prince metal engine pectoris. Painless myocardial ischemia, microvascular engine pectoris or cardiac associated X syndrome. Myocardial infection, which including myocardial infection with Q wave, large focal transmural and ST elevation, and myocardial infection without Q wave or small focal. Post infection cardiosclerosis, like uh, a point in classification of coronary heart disease, heart failure indicating the former stages, it also, it can be independently conditioned, but sometimes heart failure can be uh, in, in, um, in the complication of coronary heart disease. Dilation of the heart rhythm and conduction, different types of dilation of the heart rhythm and conduction. Returning to the stable engine pectoris, which we can differentiate it and we need to classify by the fourth uh, functional classes. Uh, first functional classes of the stable engine pectoris or coronary heart, stable coronary heart disease. Its ethics of ischemic external pain occur only at high loads, performed for a long time and uh, at a fast pace, latent coronary insufficiency. Second, uh, functional class, a slight limitation of a usual physical activity. Pain ethics secure cure at an average pace of walking. It's 80 or 100 steps in one minute on a flat place at a distance of our 15, uh, 500 meters, especially in damp cold weather against the wine when climbing stairs above the uh, one floor. Functional, uh, third functional classes of stable engine pictorials, a pronounced limitation, um, or several limitation of the usual physical activity, uh, heart attacks occurs immediately when accelerating working, running or walking uh, at an average pace um, in a flat place in a distance from um, the uh, 100 to uh, 500, uh, 500 meters uh, when climbing to the first floor of the staircase. And uh, the last functional classes of stable engine pectoris, pronounced limitation of physical activity, minimum dosage and minimal emotional stress can be a cause of development hypothetic of a pain or pain of patient are not able to perform the slightest physical activity without an attic of the pain and the occurrence of the pain attic during the rest is significant for patient with fourth 
functional clashes of the stable angina pectoris. So stable angina pectoris, we can differentiate it and we can classify by four functional clashes. Next, um, clinical syndrome of damage and cardiovascular system, it's a syndrome of arterial hypertension. So arterial hypertension is a tool, is an increase in the level of the blood pressure, and arterial hypertension as an independent nasological unit, essential or primary hypertension, is a disease with a specific etiology uh, and uh, pathogenesis in which an increase in blood pressure from the very beginnings in the mean and uh, leading signs. And it's not caused by the pathology of other organs and systems. Independently, essential arterial hypertension like a thirst damage. In a contrast, uh, we can identify symptomatic or secondary hypertension as an increased level of the blood pressure is one of the symptoms of the some another um, disease, like a damaging of the kidney, parenchymal, or um, renal. Uh, damaging and parenchymal in the cause of glomerular nephritis or renal artery stenosis in case of um, vascular damaging and aortic insufficiency and so on and so on. The main complaints, the patient with arterial hypertension, first of all, it's a headache more often uh, in the occipital or parietal areas. It's noted in any time of the, of the day uh, by its nature, pulsating or constricting, or like a pulse, um, like a dizziness, a change in vision also can be a compliant to the patient with uh, hypertension, flying fires in front of the eyes, the appearance of a sports and cycles in front of the eyes and decreased vision, uh, stitching and arching pains in the left precardial region, uh, but uh, the most objective, it's not the complaints, the most objective signs of arterial hypertension, it's a uh, high level of the blood pressure. During objective um, examination, what we can find? Examination and palpation. Patient often had a hypersthenic constitution, increased nutrition, the face is hyperemic, apical impulse, spoiled, resistant, shifting to the left side and sometimes down to the uh, six intercostal space from the normal localization. Arterial pulse feeling is full, voltage is solid. During percussion of the heart, we can determine the left border of the relative donus of the heart is shifting to the left due to development hypertrophy of the left ventricle. Mm. Shifting to the left, mm. And the fifth or sixth intercostal space with the shifting of the apical impulse, uh, first of all, due to hypertrophy in the state of the compensation due to dilatation of the left ventricula and developing the aortic configuration of the heart. During auscultation, first tone in the apex is weakened. The emphasis of the second tone above the aorta is the aortic configuration of the heart forms at the apex Functional systolic murmur can be had due to the relative insufficiency of the mitral valve due to enlargement of the fibrosis rings of the mitral valve. Uh, due to instrumental method of diagnosis uh, of the organ damaging, uh, in case of radiological or X-ray diagnostics, we can determine the what is a component and can be expanded. Height out, uh, during assessment the configuration of the heart, we can find out a configuration due to dilatation of um, the chamber of the left ventricle. During the CG, we can find signs of left ventricular hypertrophy, because as you know, it's impossible to differentiate it by the CG is it will be dilatation or is it will be uh, or will it will be uh, hypertrophy. So on the CG, we will find the signs of hypertrophy at the left ventricle and the signs of systolic overload of the left ventricular. Uh, during um, echocardiography, uh, information about left ventricular hypertrophy and dilatation after assess uh, the size of the chambers, evaluation of the diastolic and systolic function of the left ventricular. Uh, after assess uh, the condition of uh, the fundus, 
uh, retinal fundus, we can determine retinal arteries and arterioles normally had a more uh, rectilinear curve uh, than usual. The dents are dilated, convoluted there, uh, torticity, the macula, the symptom of the gaze, like a specific signs of developing uh, re, um, hypertension retinopathy. And the wall of the artery is compacted. It's pressed on the underlying veins and goes into neural in the intersection. Symptoms of intersection of harm status uh, in the different stages and the different degrees. But the most uh, important sign of determination of the instrumental method of uh, diagnostics, surely it's a classical method of the measuring of the blood pressure. And look to this picture, and uh, um, let's discuss the main rules and the uh, rules of methodic of uh, the right way measuring the level of the blood pressure. Uh, in comfort, we should do it in the comfortable position for patient in sitting position, necessary to provide emphasis on the back on the chair, and you can uh, you have to tell to patient that you put your back to the back of the chair and try to relax your leg, uh, not cross the leg and put the uh, the feet of your leg. Uh, to the flow comfortable way. Measurement is carried out after not less than five minutes rest. The hand uh, on which the measurement is taken should lie on the table also comfortable way and be at the level of the heart. The measurement is carried out on the hand on which the pressure is more higher and during the first contact with a patient, you have to measure the level of the blood pressure on the both sides of the both hands. During um, the measurement of the blood pressure, the patient should not talk. You should not ask something. Uh, for one and one um, half hours, you need to exclude it, food intake and smoking, and also intake alcohol, intake a strong coffee and tea. Also necessary to have a cuff of, uh, of the required size, which must be applied to the bar shoulder. And before the starting the measurement, you have to uh, find the diameter of the shoulder of your patient. And after that, you'll find uh, the normal length of the, uh, of, uh, the cuff. The low end of the cuff should be placed uh, one on two centimeter above the, the projection of um, uh, the artery above the elbow. Measurement of the blood pressure is recommended twice with a break between two measurements and three and five minutes. Measurement of the blood pressure by the uh, classically ascultatory method or carrot Korotkov method using uh, a theta, uh, phone, and phone and a scope and listening to pulsation tones requires the observance and additional rules. Set the head at the set of endoscope in the center on the ulnar force in the projection of the artery. Quickly pump air into the calf. Um, in the cup where the level of inflation should be more uh, for 20 and 30 millimeters above the normal blood pressure. Uh, and you uh, should ask a patient before it. And after opening the valve, air should be blown off and the not uh, um, more with a speed than the two or three millimeters per second. And you try to, not try, you have to fix the appearance of the first tone of carrot cope and it will be determination of systolic level of the blood pressure. Um, and after that, you will have to find the last uh, tone of carrot cough, uh, which will be a mark of you, of you with the diastolic level of the pressure. If it was a first contact with patient, you have to continue this such type of measurement on the second hand. So about classification, about classification of uh, the level of the blood pressure. There is two different classification about guidelines. There is classification of uh, European uh, um, cardiology uh, society and about American cardiology society. Uh, about Europe um, society of hypertension, optimal uh, blood pressure 
systolic less than 120, diastolic less than 80, normal blood pressure and average between uh, 130 and diastolic uh, less uh, than 85, high normal pressure in the average between 130 till 139, diastolic in the average between uh, 85 and 89, uh, first grade of the um, arterial hypertension or mild hypertension, uh, systolic pressure 140 to 159, diastolic 90, 99, uh, second grade or moderate hypertension 116, 179, uh, diastolic pressure 100 till 109, and uh, third grade uh, severe hypertension, systolic pressure more than 118, diastolic pressure more than 110. Also, we can um, uh, differentiate isolated systolic hypertension. In case of systolic uh, blood pressure uh, more or the same with 140 millimeters, but diastolic less than 90. It's a European uh, classification about American Heart Association or um, Cardiology Society um, of the America. It depends. Uh, your country, Arabian countries, working by the American guidelines, and also uh, India uh, working by the uh, American gu guidelines. But it depends on the uh, which country you'll continue. Your, maybe your education. Maybe you're working. So, about American Heart Association, normal blood pressure, systolic, lose, le look less than 180, less than uh, 80, the same level, yes. Elevated blood pressure, 120 till 129, less than 80. High level of the blood pressure of first stage of hypertension, 130, 139, but look in the Europe society, it's a high normal pressure, this difference, yes? So level of the 130, 139, and level of the 80, 89, it's already first stage of hypertension. High blood pressure or hypertension, second stage, 140 or higher from the systolic, and 90 or higher from the diastolic levels. And also we can differentiate it, differentiate it, such condition like a hypertensive crisis. Uh, and uh, the dates about systolic pressure more than 118, diastolic more than 120. It's American Heart Association classification, the last dates about classification of the blood pressure. So also, I would like to discuss with you the last moment of this lecture. It's daily, oh, just a minute, it's daily monitoring of the blood pressure. Yes, usually a routine method of monitoring of the blood pressure, it's a, a routine measurement of the blood pressure by classically or standard method. But we uh, had such ability like daily monitoring of the blood pressure is one of the way to establish arterial hypertension Accordingly to leading European researchers, normal blood pressure reveals obtaining during uh, blood pressure monitorings per day less than 130 uh, to 80 millimeters, uh, less than 140 90 millimeters, and per night less than 120 and 70 uh, millimeters. It's a date for um, normal level of the blood pressure. One of the indications of daily monitoring of the blood pressure for the diagnosis of arterial hypertension is the hypertension time index. This is the uh, percentage of the time when the blood pressure level is above the critical level for a particular time period. The time index of hypertension in healthy individuals is an average between uh, 8 and 25 percent. The borderline stage in the average between that 26 and uh, 49 percent with stable arterial hypertension, 15 percent uh, or more in the daytime and at night also. Next, the determination of the functional state of the kidney calculated the glomerular filtration rate according to the last stage of the uh, the last um, type of the formula CKD EPI chronic kidney diseases epidemiology. It's uh, formulated so. 
Next method of examination, the patient with arterial hypertension syndrome. Next, determination of vascular remodeling and damaging of the vascular. Carry out the following studies. Determination of the propagation velocity of the pulse wave between the carotid and femoral arteries. Also, we can determine during ultrasound examination of arteries, it's necessary to determine the thickness of the complex intimum media of the carotid arteries can be um, a reason of development coronary heart disease and what can like a host factors also. Ultrasound examination of the main arterial vessels for the presence of atherosclerotic plaque cause arterial hypertension working like a host factor for uh, the structure of the cardiovascular system and uh, uh, electroencephalography to assess the blood supply to the vessels cells, arteries, and then of the brain and for assess the intensity of the brain uh, blood uh, circulation.